Hey YouTube, it's Justin, um, answering your questions from joincfe.com slash knock. Uh, today's question comes from uh, Priyanaka. Priyanaka, uh, hopefully that's your name. Sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. Um, what is the difference between object and instance? Um, don't ever be sorry for asking a basic question. When you're learning, ask those basic questions. You have to ask them. You might not always get a response, but the important part is that you are asking them and you're starting to think of these things because questions help you find and determine the answers that you seek. So that's number one. Just wanted to get that out because I think that's really important, um, especially when it comes to learning a new programming language in general because it's very logical. Programming languages are very logical. So asking more questions will help you understand these programming languages even deeper. And then here's the other trick. If you get these questions, if you start to understand and learn these things, go to the questions that you see out there, such as what we have at joincfe.com slash knock, but also what you might see on Stack Overflow and try to answer those questions yourself. Try to think of your own answer. How would you answer those questions? And that will also help you understand these things even better because if you can't answer it, you have to do some research and guess what? You get to do some learning. So this question itself, you asked what's the difference between an object and an instance. An object and an instance are the same thing in this case, right? So when, when you're dealing with classes and you actually you know put the parentheses after the class name, so you have some class, parentheses, you get an object and an instance. So you get an instance of that class, which is a copy of that class, and that instance can be used or considered as an object. Right? So when you create an instance of a class, it's now an object because Python is a object oriented programming language. So when you deal with an instance of a class, that is considered an object that you can pass around. Now other objects could include like a variable. So let's say for instance, you use a variable that you said 30, you know, some, some variable name equals to 30. Well, the some variable name you can pass around right? That is an object that you can pass around now. It's kind of like I'm holding a iPhone here, right? This is a phone. It's an iPhone. If I handed it to you, it'd be an object that I just handed it to you. But we all collectively call it an iPhone because Apple named it an iPhone. But really, it's also a smartphone. It has all these features and functions and whatever. It's an object, but we can pass it around. It's slightly different when you come into programming, but only slightly. And then when you really think about it, it's not a procedure, right? I'm not giving you instructions, right? I'm handing you a physical object. Once I hand you a physical object, it is now an object and it's an instance of the iPhone class, right? So this is an iPhone. It's one iPhone of millions of iPhones or the definition of iPhone, which is the iPhone class. You yourself are an instance of the human class, right? You are a human. And you might be an instance of the male class. You might be an instance of the female class. It doesn't matter. And then you go down further and further and we're talking about you might be an instance of your family or you are an instance, not might be. You are an instance of your family and those have certain traits and attributes about them that really apply to you and your family but not apply to everybody, right? So in that case, you as an instance are an object in this world too, right? You are a human, of course, and you're a person, and that's important, but you're still an object. You're still something that exists in this world, much like this phone exists, and we can pass these objects around. Something we can't exactly pass around are ideas. Like, I can tell you about the idea, but I didn't hand it to you, right? I can only tell you about it, so that is a, like you could almost argue that's a procedure. So it's a little bit different as far as programming is concerned, right? I could tell you order and like if I gave you order of something, that's not an object either, right? If I told you one, two, three, four, five, and each one of those things like actually meant something, that's not an object, right? It's a procedure. So I can't give you this procedure. I could write it down on an object and give it to you. And now it's an object with this procedure, but the procedure itself is not there. So th that's kind of the difference between the two. Hopefully that cleared it up, but <laughs> let's make it simple one last time. So when it comes to what we're doing, if I refer to something as an object, it's usually also an instance. So when you're working in Django, 
you do model.objects.get and then something, right? You, your, your model itself, once you create an instance of the model, that is now considered an object. It's an object of that class. It's an instance of that class. They are very much interchangeable. Now, this is a long form way to kind of answer this question because, well, there's a lot of things in programming that sometimes they have a one-to-one -one relationship. Sometimes they are exactly what, they, what we say they are. Sometimes they're not. So hopefully that answers your question and thanks so much. This is a good one. I really like this question. It's not, a, it is basic, but it's a really solid question because it's something that you should think about when you're building software or at least when you're learning about building software. Um, thanks so much. Again, my name is Justin and answering your questions at joinsafe.com slash knock. See you in the next one.